Welcome to part 1 of Bohr's installation training videos. These installation videos are primarily concerned with installing access control. However, this introductory video will give you some useful information should you be installing the lock on a door. Here you can see a typical wooden door that we are going to provide access control for. On this side of the door will be the lock manager, controlling the access. Entry will be made using the existing handle. On the other side, the handle will be disabled and access will be made using a Bora card reader. This latch will be replaced with a Trine fail-safe electric strike. The advantage of the Trine is its small size and that its width is almost identical to the strike that we are replacing, thus reducing the time needed to cut out the frame for the lock. Here you can see the frame marked up for the strike. Note that the width of the strike is close to the width of the existing cutout. The hole for the lock has been cut out, the hole for the door monitor also and the door monitor installed. The strike and the door monitor are wired into a 4-core stranded cable which will be fed back to the Bora lock manager. The finished fitted Trine electric strike complete with faceplate. There are different faceplates available for every application. Welcome to part 2 of Bohr's installation training video. Part 2 shows you how to install a reader and a lock manager onto a door. In the example that we are using here, both the electric strike and door monitor are already installed as demonstrated in video part 1, and that users are to swipe the card to gain entry, but turn the handle on the door to exit. If you want to use a push to exit button and, in the case of a fail-safe lock, a break glass, it is simple to install these adjacent to the lock manager. Typical tools that you might need. In addition, top left you will see the borer reader and its cover and mounting kit. Below it is the lock manager which is the device that controls the lock, and is employed to break out the power and data supplied from the mid-span bridge. The lock manager should always be mounted on the secure side of the door. The metal bracket to the right is a custom board part for surface mounting lock managers onto a wall. It includes mounting posts for a tamper switch shown adjacent, which ensures that an alarm is generated should the front cover be removed once installed for security purposes. Reader Installation Drill two mounting holes and a hole for the cable at a DDA heights of 1 meter. Here we are mounting the lock manager in a housing on the opposite side of the wall to the reader, so we have drilled right through the partition. If this is not the case, then the reader cable may need to be extended to where the lock manager is to be fitted. Measurements from the reader spacing can be taken from the reader itself. Attach the tamper alarm self-adhesive reflector patch around and above the data cable insert the wall plugs supplied for the fixing screws. Feed the cable through and then screw the reader onto the wall with the supplied screws. Do not use wider screws and do not over tighten as this may break the plastic mounting lugs of the reader. The front cover has sprung legs. Compress these slightly and clip the cover on ensuring that the bore logo is at the bottom. The following video will show this whole process. The reader can be used to measure the mounting hole separation. Attach the tamper sensor reflector.
Do not over tighten the screws. Ensure the bore logo is at the bottom. Spring the legs gently inwards to clip into place. Now we come on to install the lock manager. In our case, it is on the opposite side of the wall to the reader. It is in its surface housing, although it can be mounted within a push to exit switch using a custom or a bracket, or in the back box of a break glass, or in a single or double gang plastic surface or flush patches box. Measure and drill the holes for the bracket fixing screws. Fit wall plugs then screw the bracket onto the wall with the board mounting pillars at the bottom. Pull the reader, the lock and the network cables through. Strip back the network cables. The green pair are not used and may be tied back or cut off. Using a chrome tool, connect the cables to the chrome socket on the lock manager. Make sure that the cables are positioned on the inside pointing out, otherwise the angle of the cable will prevent the mounting of the lock manager into the housing. Use the mid-span bridge slash lock manager technical manual or border flash cards to determine the correct wiring of the cables. This must be done before the lock manager is mounted onto the bracket. Mount the tamper switch onto the bracket, followed by the lock manager and screw in using two M3 by 10 screws. Connect the tamper switch to the purple and black tamper inputs of the lock manager. If a double pole break glass is installed, route the tamper through one of these contacts as well. If the break glass is subsequently broken, this will generate an alarm. Connect the reader to the lock manager, matching the colors one to one. Connect the door monitor wires to the orange and black inputs, the lock to the blue negative and brown positive outputs. If there is a remote exit push button, connect this to the orange black pair. Otherwise short out the orange-black pair with an inline crimp. The lock manager needs to have its two headers set. The top one in this image is the reset header. If it is shorted during a power on, it will completely erase its configuration and should be inserted when installed for the first time at location. The lower header nearest the edge defines the lock type during power on. Short it out for a fail-safe lock. Note that both header states are only read during power on and that the lock type will be overwritten by the Fusion software once the lock manager is online. After power on reset, the reset jumper should be removed, otherwise the lock manager will perform a full reset during each power on. This completes the hardware install. The lock manager and reader now need to be configured on the system. Welcome to part 4 of Bora's installation training video. Part 4 shows you how to commission the reader and lock manager. Connect the network cable into the mid-span bridge and you will see the lock manager and the reader power up, perform their self-tests and attempt to sign on or auto mount. You will also see the power and data lights on the mid-span bridge ports light up. Watch the following clip to see these in action. This is the lock manager going through its full reset cycle where the LEDs flash alternately. At the end of the cycle, both lights will remain powered on and it is now ready.
The reader will also flash its LEDs alternately during its reset phase. At the end of the reset, the right-hand LED will light red until it has made contact and will then extinguish. The left LED will indicate in green traffic on the data bus. If the red LED illuminates, this indicates an error on the data bus and the cabling should be checked. The mid-span bridge, upon detection of a compliant device or devices for example lock manager and reader, will first apply power and subsequently allow data through. Again, if the power or data LEDs are not illuminated after 30 seconds or so, this could indicate a fault on the cabling and should be checked. Once the reader and lock manager have signed on successfully to the system, they can be configured appropriately for example meaningful names, associating the two devices and adding access groups, etc. Finally, screw the cover onto the lock manager housing. Welcome to part 5 of Bohr's installation training video, Door Commissioning. A typical door installation consists of one or two card access readers, a lock manager, an electric door release and a sensor attached to the door frame to detect if the door is open or shut. If you are using a magnetic lock to secure the door you will also have installed a push to exit switch and a fire break glass to allow egress in an emergency. Every board device has a MAC address. This is a unique identity given to each device at manufacturer. This is used during commissioning to automatically mount the device when it is first connected to a network. You will start the commission process by first providing power and data to the door. Plug the midspan end of the CAT5 cable into one of the midspan bridge's 8 ports. You will notice first that the port's orange LED will illuminate indicating that power is being delivered to the door. This is followed by the green LED illuminating when a data connection is made to the door. After completing a power-up test a device will attempt to sign on to database using its MAC address. On receipt of the sign-on message the NIM software will send a sign-on acknowledge to the device. This message contains basic configuration details including a device address which will be used by the device to identify itself in all further communications with a NIM. When a device signs on an entry is made in the database, Newly signed on readers and lock manager can be identified by the MAC address. Notice that the icon in front of the MAC address changes depending upon the device type. You configure the device by double clicking on its MAC reference. This opens the database entry for the device so that you can customize it. The Bohr smart card reader is normally installed on the unsecured side of the door. Its function is to read proximity smart cards. Check the card holder's access credentials before deciding to grant or deny access. If access is granted, the card reader will send a command to the associated lock manager telling it to release the door. Select the Device General Details tab. Give the card reader a suitable name that describes its location and function and enables you to easily identify it. Select Device Configuration Options tab. The area transaction details allow you to monitor cardholder movements from zone to zone. These are also used for anti-passback control. Set the time embargo if, after gaining access, you wish to deny the cardholder from gaining access a second time for a predetermined time span. The door open time and the time to alarm can be omitted because the system will set these automatically to one second less than the equivalent times you set for the lock manager. You can work with a variety of different card formats within the one system, so select the type of card the reader is to work with. The card number field you must correspond to the equivalent card number field in the personnel record. 
If you select the standard card number for the reader, then the reader will cross-reference the card holder unique ID read from the card read with the entry held in the standard card number field on the person's record. Select the device reader rules tab. Choose the set of rules appropriate for each day of the week. If reader rules have not been assigned the card reader will deny access when a card is presented. The lock manager, which is normally installed on the secure side of the door, has two functions. The first is to convert the 48 volts delivered down the CAT5 cable to 12 volts required by the door lock and card reader. The second is, under the direction of the smart card reader, to manage the door security including unlocking and locking. Select the device general details tab. Give the lock manager a suitable name that describes its location and function and enables you to easily identify it. Select the door lock manager configuration tab. Select the in reader and optionally the out reader. The lock manager is to be associated with. Only readers connected to the same port as the lock manager will be displayed. You cannot associate the lock manager with readers connected to other ports. Set the duration that the lock is to be released, and the time allowed for the door to be ajar before an alarm is generated. The delay before unlocking the door should be set to nil unless the reader is located at a distance from the door. Set the device features appropriate to the operation of the door. A door open monitor contact should always be fitted so only set the monitor not available if you have failed to install a door open monitor. Only in exceptional circumstances should a door monitor be omitted. Set the pass back switch option if you have fitted the push to exit button. If this is not set then handle egress will be assumed whenever the lock manager detects that the door is open without an associated card access event. Set the lock monitor option only if you are monitoring both the lock status and the door open sensor. For example, monitoring a magnetic locks hall effect sensor and the door open monitor contact on the door frame. Set the power output mode for the installed lock. Set fail safe if the door is locked when the lock is powered and fail secure if the door is locked when power is removed. Set the appropriate initial power level and duration and minimum ongoing power level for the lock. The initial power is the energy delivered to lock when it is first engaged. The sustained power is the energy required by the lock to maintain its state once it has been engaged. Do not give the lock more energy than it needs because this will cause the lock to get hot by turning the excess energy into heat thereby reducing the lock's operational life. Setting the energy level too low may not allow the lock to function properly. Select the device reader rules tab. Choose the set of rules appropriate for each day of the week. Once you have configured and saved the operating parameters of both readers and lock manager, these will be downloaded to the devices. This may be instantaneous or delayed should downloads to other devices be taking place.